You're good to go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Fresh Dental Shattering session. Today with us, we have Dr. Igor Borisov, and he's a general dentist with emphasis in guided surgery and a 3D printing enthusiast. So he'll be sharing his dental experience with us. So Dr. Borisov, whenever you're ready, you can begin. Cool. Does everybody see my screen? Yeah, we see the screen. We see the Zoom screen. Oh, the Zoom screen. Okay. We should probably pull the lecture up, huh? Yes. <laughs> And how do the questions work? For example, if somebody has questions during the presentation, am I going to be able to see their notification? I haven't done the Zoom thing too often. So all the questions will be at the end. So after the after you finish presenting, we'll have a Q&A. And then I'll read the questions to you. Cool. Very good. OK, let's go from here. We don't see you anymore, but maybe it's just because you're sharing the PowerPoint. What about when I speak? Do I show up or no? Your name should show up. My name shows up? <laughs> well, they've seen enough of my face, so let's, uh, we can just pay attention to the lecture now. So as you just heard, my name is Dr. Igor Borisov, and I'm a general dentist practicing in Maricopa, Arizona right now. And this is a uh, mostly tailored to pre-dental students. So uh, I've actually never, you know, never shared my experiences with pre-dentals, but I was a pre-dental not too long ago. I actually graduated dental school in 2019. So let's see, I was in college, I guess, 10 years ago. So I know the whole DAT and application cycle. I wouldn't, uh, I would not wish that on anybody to go through again, but once you get through it, it's well worth it. Um, a little bit about my background. I, uh, I was born in Ukraine, grew up in Maryland, and then I came over to dental school in Arizona, and that's where I stayed. And, uh, you know, sunshine, blue skies kind of kept me here. So as you saw the lecture, my emphasis is general dentistry and 3D printing in a private practice. Uh, 3D printing, I think, is the future of dentistry. And I know for pre-dental students, you're just right now focused on, hey, how can I get into dental school? But if I were to give you a recommendation, you should take a look at when you're doing interviews to see what the dental school is doing and if you want to practice that way after you graduate because a lot of the things you learn in dental school and the way they teach how much of an emphasis they have in digital technology research uh, you know clinical skills that translates directly to the type of job you get afterwards to the type of practice you'll have of course you can you can always augment that by CEs and everything but you know it's a, it's a good starting point i would i would pick a dental school based on the clinical ex experience you get but that's that's just my experience. I went to Midwestern University, and uh, you know it's a little bit pricier, but we get a lot of hands-on experience. And uh, being fresh out of school and uh, sharing some of the cases I've done, you'll see that we got a lot of you know, we got a lot of uh, experience for our money. Um, basically, so dentistry is not all I do. When I'm not doing teeth, I can you know go to the lake, paddle a little bit, some pictures. Arizona does have water, uh, and uh, that's my pug and girlfriend. All right, so what is digital dentistry? Basically, uh, does everyone see my mouse pointer here? Let's see, I am on my iPad, so it's kind of kind of difficult. Yeah, no mouse pointer here, but if you take a look at the light bulb, that'll be your idea. And then. Uh, the nice part about the idea is that you can transfer it on to your computer screen because with digital dentistry, we're focusing from not just the patient's mouth, but what we want, we want to accomplish there first. So we can plan whatever cases we want to do on the computer, on our scanner, whatnot. We can print out something that helps us do a procedure. And afterwards, we can deliver a product for a patient that's way more predictable, way more pretty, and it'll make the procedure way faster. So what are the possibilities of 3D printing? So a lot of these things uh, might sound like a foreign language to you guys, but you know, you've all had dental visits. Uh, we can actually do many, many 
things with this. So we can do retainers, we can do wax ups for a patient. A wax up is uh, basically a way to communicate to the lab what you know size, shape, uh, well, not really color yet, but information about the aesthetics of the teeth before you create a final product that costs you a lot in lab bills. You can try things in, you can, you know, turn them a splint, try it in the mouth. We call that a snap on smile. Uh, we can even do dentures. Uh, we're getting pretty close to printing uh, final dentures in house. So that is a real picture. Uh, you can print the gums and teeth separately, bind them together. There's also ways to print the whole thing monolithic. And monolithic means it's all printed from one material and you just stay in it. Uh, I would say right now, the printing of the dentures, it's not as good as a product you can get from the lab, but at least for transitional prosthetics, uh, it's very, very nice. We've gotten a lot of good feedback from patients about it. Uh, night guards are a big money maker with uh, 3D printing. As you're aware, there are lab fees that go uh, with owning a practice. And uh, for example, you know, a patient comes in and they're a heavy grinder. That's when, you know, at night their teeth contact each other and they lose structure. Uh, basically, we make them a splint and you wear this every night and it protects your teeth from hitting themselves. And uh, uh, when we get this from a lab, for example, I believe the lab bill for standard dental practice, and uh, I haven't purchased labs for a long time since purchasing these for 3D printers, but I believe long ago we used to pay around $150 per night guard. And uh, now that we have a printer, we just buy some resin and uh, we can print one for like a dollar or two. It's uh, very nice. Now, let me go over what a 3D printer is and how it works. So um, I'm sure everyone's heard of 3D printing by now. It's a uh, hot new thing. Well, not even too new anymore, but uh, there's two different types. There's uh, the standard filament printers that you can buy on Amazon and uh, whatever, eBay, Walmart. They have a uh, basically a line of PVC or any other kind of plastic. It's wrapped in a reel, kind of like a fishing rod. Uh, it gets loaded onto the printer. And just like your uh, desktop paper printer, it has a bed and it melts this uh, PVC line slowly and layers uh, from bottom up. So it layers kind of like, you know, playing with wet sand. It, it builds things uh, in little, I can't even explain it right now. Uh, but that's uh, very rare for dental printers. Dental printers are resin based uh, and resin based printers work a little bit differently. So they don't have this little snake of uh, plastic coming out of from the printing tip. Um, we have a vat of resin and uh, you pour whatever material you're going to be working with into the resin into the resin container and there's from the printer is one of the most difficult things you can do uh, it's easier said than done you basically have to think about it this way uh, if you want to print a 20 retainer case for a patient uh, you would have to print separate models for each week of orthodontic uh, therapy and then you have to put them into your vacuum form suck down machine, suck down a clear tray over each and every one of those models. And then each model you have to cut out and polish by hand. It's very, very time consuming. And not only are you gonna not enjoy too much, but your assistants might not like coming to work too much after that either. So we started thinking about what other things we can do with the printer and We've gotten a lot of luck with uh, surgical guides, with night guards, like I've mentioned, with all the various things that I listed before, and all of those have made this original purchase well worth it. Um, after the Sprint Ray Moon Ray, we actually now have the Sprint Ray Pro, the Sprint Ray Pro 55, my favorites here. So, of course, I posted myself too, and 
I am doing this lecture because somebody found me on Instagram and asked me, hey, Dr. B, can you talk to pre-dental students about what you're doing with 3D printing? So if you were to compare it to, for example, basketball, say you're a high school basketball player and you're you know, shooting, shooting free throws, you can basically, it's the equivalent of going on Instagram and uh, contacting your favorite, asking them for tips, and they usually respond within a few hours. So it's very nice. Oh, nice. I do have pictures of our original startup guys right there is the pro 55 no it's the pro 95 and that uh, little guy behind the pro 95 so the pro pro we own and uh, we replace it with a different printer but that's the one that started at all it's a piece of history right there uh this is the cheapest patient that has isopropyl alcohol in it and uh, that's used to cure the models that you just printed not cure, sorry, to wash the excess reds and off the model that's just printed. Uh, and then some people actually use uh, nail curing beds for uh, manicures. So that one is from an old practice we had, and uh, it was just a leftover. Anything that has UV light, if you're going to be using this uh, pretty regularly and uh, you're going to be delivering a lot of things in patients' mouths, I station that corresponds. On the lower left of the screen is the tubs of resins that we use so as you can